T-minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. PLS is go for auto sequence start. T-minus 25 seconds. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds and the sound suppression water system has been activated. We have a go from engine start. Three engines up and ready. Three, two, one, zero. Booster ignition. And lift off of Discovery. Blazing a trail for scientific discoveries of North Space Station. Go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Traveling 1,000 miles per hour, Discovery's engines are now throttled back up, forming in full capability. At the top, the shuttle weighed more than 4.5 million pounds, and now one minute and 27 seconds into the flight, the main engines and solid rocket boosters have reduced that weight by about half. The solid rocket, bo rocket boosters alone are burni burning 11,000 pounds of propellant per second, and the external tank is now 3,000 pounds lighter than when it began. Discovery is now 21 miles away from its launch pad and uh, 22 miles in altitude, traveling 2,700 miles per hour. All three main engines are working just as expected. The three fuel cells are generating power and the three auxiliary power units are all producing pressure. In short, everything performing well. Two minutes and seven seconds into the STS-131 mission. The booster officer in the mission control center has confirmed solid rocket booster separation. All systems continuing to, continuing to function well. Two orbital maneuvering system engines on Discovery's tail are now firing as well, providing the shuttle an extra boost into orbit. The engine burn will last one minute and 44 seconds. Discovery, two engine tail. Discovery copies, two engine tail. That call indicates that Discovery can now reach Moron in Spain should one of the three main engines fail. However, all three of those main engines are currently working well. Two minutes and 59 seconds into the flight, and Discovery is now 79 miles away from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, 48 miles in altitude, and traveling at 4,500 miles per hour. Space Shuttle Discovery also seeing the first of many sunrises of the STS-131 mission. Discovery Houston, you are negative return. Discovery copies, negative return. Discovery is now flying too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine fail failure. That's not currently a problem, however, as all engines are continuing to perform as expected. Four minutes and 15 seconds into Discovery's flight, 
Shuttles traveling 6,000 miles per hour at an altitude of 63 miles and uh, is 181 miles away from Kennedy Space Center. Environmental Systems Officer here in Mission Controls confirmed that the flash evaporator system has been activated to provide cooling to the shuttle system until the shuttle's cargo bay doors open and uh, double as radiators. Discovery, press to ATO. Discovery copies, press to ATO. Should two of the shuttle's three main engines fail after this point, it can still reach a safe, though lower than planned orbit, as that call from Capcom Rick Sterko indicated. Discovery is now five minutes and 42 minutes Discovery, seconds into its flight. Ops three. Discovery, single engine Ops 3. 67 miles in altitude and 351 miles away from Kennedy Space Center. Discovery could still make it across the Atlantic for an abort landing, even if two of the three, three main engines failed at this point. All engines are performing well. Discovery, single engine, Zaragoza. Discovery, copy, single engine, Zaragoza. Discovery now flying more than 10,000 miles per hour. 66 miles in altitude and 430 miles away from Kennedy Space Center. Discovery, press to Miko. Discovery copies, press to Miko. And that call indicates that Discovery can reach its planned orbit of 136 by 36 statute miles, even if one of the engines fails. All three engines are still working well, as are the auxiliary power units and the three fuel cells. Discovery, you are single engine press. Your shutdown plan is nominal. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch maneuver. Copy, nominal shutdown plan. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Even if two engines were to fail at this point, Discovery could still make its planned orbit with just one. That shouldn't be necessary, however, as all three engines are still performing at full capability. Also, Capcom Rick Sterkow there letting Commander Alan Poindexter know that Discovery will cut off its three main engines as planned and that he has the go-ahead then to pitch Discovery up to allow for photos of the external tank to be taken after its external, after its separation. Discovery now 7 minutes and 48 seconds into its uh, mission, traveling at 15,000 miles per hour. 63 miles in altitude and 730 miles downrange from Kennedy Space Center. Booster officer here in Mission Control is reporting that Discovery's three main engines have been shut off. We're now waiting for external tank separation. Discovery Houston, nominal Miko, OMS 1 is not required. Nominal Miko, OMS 1 not required. And there is the external tank separation. Eight minutes and 53 seconds into the STS 130 mission. Discovery now safely in orbit. 66 miles above the Earth, and traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. Also, uh, 1,065 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center.
Good view of Discovery here. Still 73 miles away from Kennedy Space Center and 15 miles up. Traveling 1,700 miles per hour with six minutes to go. Discovery Houston, you are on energy approaching the hack. No changes to winds and weather. Go for nominal shoot deploy. Copy. Copy, it's in nominal shoot deploy. Discovery will soon be approaching the imaginary circle leading towards the runway that's created by the microwave scan beam landing system. That allows the commander and pilot to guide the vehicle as it makes its final approach to runway 33 at Kennedy Space Center. There the commander will take control of the shuttle steering once its speed has dropped below Mach 1. It's at 1.2 right now, Mach 1 being the speed of sound. Discovery is currently traveling 800 miles per hour, 68 miles away from Kennedy Space Center, and uh, less than 10 miles in altitude. Discovery will be making its left-hand overhead turn of 200 degrees before it's lined up with one run runway 33. And Commander Alan Poindexter is now at the controls of Space Shuttle Discovery as it's reached subsonic sounds, speeds rather. those sonic booms announcing sonic booms announcing Discovery's arrival. It's now just 68 miles away from Kennedy Space Center 27,000 feet in altitude and traveling 530 miles per hour. Discovery on at the 180 on at the 180. Pilot Jim Dutton now taking over controls of the shuttle for a moment. And that call from Capcom Rick Sturco indicates the shuttle has 180 degrees to go in its turn around toward runway 33. All continuing to look good on board Discovery as it makes it way, its way home. 68 miles to go, currently three miles in altitude and traveling 420 miles per hour. Discovery, you are on at the 90. On at the 90. And Commander Alan Poindexter, now back in control of Space Shuttle Discovery. Just two minutes now until touchdown. Discovery, runway in sight. Roger. Less than a minute and a half until touchdown. Discovery is now descending 
at a rate 20 times higher and seven times steeper than what a commercial airline would experience on its final approach. One minute now to touchdown. Discovery's landing gear will be locked down and into place at 300 feet in altitude. It's currently 3,500 3, feet and uh, traveling at a rate of 370 miles per hour. Thirty seconds until touchdown. down and locked. <laughs> Main gear touchdown. Pilot Jim Dutton now deploying the drag chute. Nose gear touchdown. That brings an end to the STS-131 mission, the 131st Space Shuttle flight, and the 33rd to the International Space Station. Discovery left Florida on April 5th with 7.6 tons of new science equipment and spare parts, including equipment that should improve the station's capability for Earth observation work, equipment that could help astronauts avoid muscle astrophy, and scientists better understand muscle atrophy, and equipment that will help keep the station systems cooling properly. Discovery brings home with it the last large return load from the station, two tons of used equipment. Roger, wheel stop, Discovery, welcome home. Dex, congratulations to you and the crew on an outstanding mission. There are no immediate post-landing deltas. We'll meet you on page 5-3 of the entry checklist. Houston Discovery, thanks for those words, CJ. It was a great mission. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed working with you and all the teams in Mission Control. And we're glad that the International Space Station is stocked up again. Thanks a lot.